Do you know what the concept decadence means for Nietzsche? My name is Rodrigo Guim, anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. Today we're going to talk about the problem of decadence that Nietzsche talks about using the French term decadence. This problem, as he himself says, has been present for him since his first writings, but it is in his later writings that he uses the term decadence and gives a new interpretation of the concept. Nietzsche was impacted by reading the book Essays of Contemporaneous Psychology, written in 1883 by the French literary critic Paul Bourget. And from then on, he passed on to use the concept of decadence, but in his own understanding of the term. For Nietzsche, the concept of decadence is a problem of the will to power. It is a reduction of will, a weakening of the will to power, whether at the level of an organism or at the level of culture. At the level of the organism, decadence happens when the instincts fight among themselves and an organization that increases the power of life, the potency of life, is not established. On the contrary, the tyranny of instincts can occur in a way that creates a hierarchy that diminishes the creative potential, the life potential. When Nietzsche points to Socrates as the great first decadent in Western history, he does it not to blame Socrates, but rather to have in Socrates a conceptual character to narrate the story of decadence. Socrates is that character that Nietzsche finds to try to historically situate an eruption, uh, an emergence of decadence. Nietzsche is not concerned with the historical Socrates. Nietzsche investigates a type one that produces a dualistic metaphysical philosophy which places reason above the passions or affections, which divides the world into two parts, the real world and the world of appearances. For Nietzsche, this is a symptom of a decadent life, one that needs to believe that life itself is not enough that we live only in an appearance or a simulacrum of a truer reality. And here I want to quote Nietzsche to show that his problem is not with Socrates the man, but what Socrates represents in the history of Western culture. It says Nietzsche, I never attack people, I use the person as a strong lens of augmentation, with which a state of general misery can become visible while dissimulated, barely palpable. So I attacked Wagner, or more precisely, the falsehood, the bastardy of instinct of our culture, which confuses the sophisticated with the rich, the untimely with the great ones. End of citation. In addition to Socrates, Nietzsche attacks the Apostle Paul, who created the Platonism of the masses, also from decadence, from the search to tyrannize the instincts of the organism and of the culture. In the book The Antichrist, where Nietzsche makes his most scathing criticism of Christianity and links it to Paul as a distorter of the ideas of Jesus, Nietzsche says, citation, Christianity has taken sides with everything that is weak, low, 
unsuccessful, transformed into an ideal, that which goes against the instincts of preservation of a strong life. End of citation. Christianity via Paul gave rise to a decadence that reaches into modernity and Nietzsche critiques Richard Wagner in his last writings, a former friend of his who had shown himself to be a proto-Nazi, an anti-Semitic nationalist. And this is one of the quarrels that Nietzsche has with him that produced their breakup. In 19th century German nationalism, Nietzsche was stifling. It was a culture of decadence because it aspired to idealism and was based on resentment against Jews. Nietzsche does not complain about having enemies at all. He complains about the production of enemies that comes from impotence. Slave morality always guides life by what one sees in an enemy. This comes from impotence. One does not seek to first create a life for oneself and only then to fight enemies that, in fact, diminish one's power to create a life for oneself. That's why Richard Wagner is considered impotent. His nationalism was directly linked to anti-Semitism, to attacking an other in the first place, and then to say he was German after that. And against this cultural suffocation, Nietzsche declared himself European rather than German. Nietzsche understands both organic, physiological, and cultural processes as struggles between forces of potency, of power, and in some aphorisms he will also refer to the cosmos as a whole, as composed of a will to power. He does not think from the separation between nature and culture when he speaks of will to power, just as he calls into question the soul and body dualism so dear to metaphysics since Plato. Decadence can be diagnosed precisely in a culture where the top priority is given to rational control of the body, which reflects the predominance of the impulse to self-preservation, and so the denial of creativity in life. For Nietzsche, the dominance of the self-preservation drive is an indication of a state of vital scarcity. Within will to power, life can even renounce self-preservation in favor of growth and creativity. The decadence happens precisely because there isn't much space for the impulses that stimulate diversification and increase in the potency of life and creativity to flourish. In the book The Wagner Case, Nietzsche says, What occupied me most deeply was the problem of decadence. For this, I had reasons. End of citation. Of course, these reasons were linked to the very flowering of a nationalist culture based on resentment and racism, a culture that needed enemies, however unreal they were a culture that needed ideals because it did not have an organic and social body organized for power and creativity. A dominant culture built under the ages of morals and metaphysics. A culture of slanders against life. A millennial culture dominant in the West that goes through Plato, Christianity, and modern ideals and modern man marked by reactivity and resentment. A culture that thinks philosophy is useless because it is a culture where only the slanderous ideals of life, the cosmos, nature and the body thrive. A culture of decadence that Nietzsche diagnoses so that we can get out of leveling everything down. 
if he diagnoses as a process, that process can also change and the diagnosis is already part of a change. Well, people, of course, this is not all that can be said about decadence because, as Nietzsche says himself, this concept goes throughout all of his work. You can find it in many, many forms. But this was a small introduction so you can study for yourselves. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon, on YouTube and other websites. Thank you for all. Thank you for making this possible and see you next time.